What's good, everybody? It's your boy, O'Shea Duke Jackson, back at it again with another episode of The Celebrity Junk. Jamal Harrison Bryant went viral this week when he appeared on um, some dusty podcast with one of these fake Christian sisters out here who was catching the Holy Ghost, but at the same time, giving him these googly eyes as if she wanted to be with him. I believe the woman's name is Rashawn Ali. Shout out to her, whoever she is. You know, she's a good looking sister, but she was out there trying to trying to catch. But anyways, he had this to say. I'm going to play it here. I'm looking for people that smell like weeds. <laughs> no, 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 really. It is... <laughs> New Birth is the largest land-owning black church in America. And so my position to my deacons is why aren't we not raising cannabis? I'll be able to bring in black males. They're able to do it legally. Mm. I'm teaching them farming. Oh, my God. I'm helping them to enhance the ecosystem. Uh, This is the kind of conversation. So if the guy, black boy in Bankhead said, they growing weed at the church? Where do I join? Yes. I don't need no pamphlet for him. Now, you heard what Pastor Jamal Harrison Bryant had to say. The land owned by New Birth Baptist Church, he wants to go ahead and and, and, and grow hemp or it is weed, sell blunts. Now, he's not saying that. He wants people to come on and smoke, but this is what he actually said, all right? The cannabis industry produces job creation and wealth creation, okay? Things have progressed. He also said that they're opening a medical clinic. Cannabis produced two plants, and one of them is hemp. Hemp is critical and important, all right? Now, he says this also, that... Basically, um, you know, this might be a way to, to, to win souls to Christ in so many words. All of this is all this is BS. I'm going to tell you exactly why. Um, I'm a church insider. My brother's a pastor. OK, now I remember Jamal Harrison Bryant from the early 2000s when he was on the Word Network. At that time, Jamal Harrison Bryant was a young pastor. Okay, young, on fire, in his early 30s, mid 30s, late 20s. I remember seeing the guy. He was all across black America, GMWA. He was getting all kinds of a woman that are loose conference. He was everywhere. The problem with Jamal Harrison Bryant is he screwed himself literally out of favor in the black church. He put much pressure on his father, who his father is currently the bishop of AME, such that he had to leave AME and become to go to new birth for that opportunity. So then Jamal Harrison Bryant had all these different babies, right? Now, follow what I'm saying. Anybody who knows what churches are and how churches run, Jamal Harrison Bryant finds himself, if you think about it, always talking about politics now. That was unusual for him to do before, but he's been doing it a lot lately. That's the way he goes viral. Why? Number one, COVID has impacted black churches' attendance. Now, if it was already bad to be worthless as an organization, which many churches, no matter what race, have become, black American churches are a one-party state, They are autocratic. They take and don't give. There's nothing that churches do anymore in these communities, including New Birth Baptist Church. They're autocratic dictatorships. And pastors are seeing attendance drop because they have no value. And they're seeing their offerings drop. Okay? So now what do you do to get these people to come to church? That's the first dilemma. The second dilemma, actually outside of the fact that that Jamal Harrison Bryant has lost a lot of credibility and 
people don't trust him. That's actually first. This is the other one was second. The third is this. Jamal Harrison Bryant is 51. He is not a young preacher anymore. He can't galvanize a young crowd. He's in the stage of ministry where now you're the old guy in the pulpit. You're no longer the young guy. And see, as you get older, what you're supposed to do is to add more value. That's what you should do. But the black church preachers and their cronies and their kleptocrats don't do that. They just keep taking money, spending people's money and, 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 and doing everything but building and offering value from anybody outside of themselves. Because, you know, all pastors in the black church, not all, but most of them want to be Christ anyway. Look at me as if I'm God anyway. That's the real idea of it all. So now what's happening is because Jamal Harrison Bryant is no longer a young preacher. He don't appeal to young folks. He tries to, but he doesn't. Not like he used to. So now Jamal Harrison Bryant, because he's already offended so many of the older black generational people. Now, what am I talking about that? Most people in black church, any churches, your tithing base. Listen to what I'm about to say. Your tithing base usually is between age 35 on up. Jamal Harrison Bryant has lost favor with those people who are already tithing. Few people give a lot of money in black churches. All right. And then with COVID and the economy being bad, People ain't open them pockets. So the big time folks may have already left and got tired of his ass and went somewhere else. So you're dealing with that, right? So follow what I'm saying. You're dealing with that. Now, with that being said, and listen to what I'm saying. With that being said, he has to get a new tithing base to help him throughout the rest of his pastoral career. Because a lot of folks already left because they know that he's a fraud. So what he's going to do is, okay, I need to uh, 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 somehow get these weed growers in this church so that they can suffice. Although I might not be getting as much money, I can get a little bit more money. And then here's the thing. With bringing in these weed growers, it's a different type of Christian who's not a holy roller type of Christian. They're not like the original devouts that will hold me accountable if I want to start sleeping with these women, because he's still a single pastor. And you, if you think Jamal Harrison Bryant is not exercising his ability to sleep with women in a city like Atlanta, you got another thing coming. Of course he's doing that. So he don't need a membership base. That's going to challenge that. Let's lower the standards and bring these people in who are going to be weed growers because weed people typically are associated with immorality. Immorality. Weed growers are associated with immorality, so they're not going to be talking about me because y'all smoking weed. And it's not going to bring in no generational wealth. It ain't going to bring in no generational wealth. If that's the case, why don't you become a farmer? We know why you don't want to become a farmer because you're a goddamn joke. But see, all of this has to do with the fact that you can't appeal to black men. You don't have no value. You don't have anything that brings in any kind of infrastructure. All Atlanta, all that money out there, all of that opportunity out there in the black South, people transient coming in. You don't have any kind of power base to do anything because y'all never thought that the black church would stop. People will stop giving money. Now you're behind the eight ball with no value for the community. And now you want to come out here and let's start selling weed. That's why you have these people calling him jokes. Let's read some of the comments. Jamal Harrison Bryant needs to hang it up. He completely lost his mind. Let everyone just evacuate his church. Brother Lordly. Adair Sheeran. Jamal Bryant saying he wants to grow marijuana on the church grounds is legitimate. The craziest thing I've ever heard in my life. Now, this is what y'all say that, 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 that this is it, right? It's the craziest thing. Because this is what y'all get. Y'all knew he was a whoremonger. You knew he was dusty. Then you elevate him because he knows how to preach. Let me tell you this about preachers. 
preachers in one party state authoritarians are very similar. Let me just say this. People like Kwame Nkrumah, Julius Nereri, um, Some of you guys may um, not agree when I say this, especially if you look at, you know, some of the people here. But Kenneth Kaunda, these are people who were very good at bringing democracy or, or independence to Africa. They were terrible leaders, especially in economic reform. Now, Nwere was pretty decent uh, as a leader. He gets a lot of respect. Nkrumah, no. But they were terrible. They were socialists. They destroyed Africa with that mindset. They were not talented enough to lead these countries. It should have been turned over to somebody else who had a better economic system and economic framework. The same thing with Jamal Harrison Bryant. He is an awesome preacher. He can talk. He's terrible at leadership. He's poor. He's not a community-minded individual. Just like Dr. Umar Johnson is a great speaker, but he can't build. He's not a leader. And often we put these talented people who can speak in front of churches or on podiums, but they're awful at leadership, which is why the black community gets it wrong. Just like the kleptocrats that hold power in Africa or a good military strongman, guerrilla war fighters, they're terrible leaders. That's why you don't get no development. That's why. So guys, what do you think? It's your boy, O'Shea Duke Jackson. Back at it again with another episode of The Celebrity Junk. I really appreciate you for all that you do. Subscribe to the bell. I'm out.